uh, uh, it's great pleasure of uh, introducing Professor Kunhu as today's Biomed Colloquium speaker. Uh, in his landmark study, series of his landmark studies, uh, Dr. Hu has applied the concepts and method derived from the statistical physics and nonlinear dynamics for medicine. And currently, uh, Dr. Hu is associate professor of medicine at Birmingham, uh, Brigham, uh, Birmingham, Brigham and Women's Hospital. And his most recent research work and the topic of his talk today is uh, scaling behavior in physiological fluctuations. Uh, let's uh, welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kun Hu. No, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. King. I mean, I think uh, uh, this is a great opportunity to, for us to exchange some of the information. And then, as I mentioned, I hear many uh, exciting topics in your group. I think I'm looking forward to some of the uh, more uh, exchange and uh, good ideas and uh, maybe potential collaboration. Mm -hmm. So today, uh, uh, there's, uh, as I mentioned, there's many different uh, uh, ongoing projects in my group. But uh, uh, I think uh, initially I thought that it's a mathematical group. I should uh, focus on something which is more uh, linked to the uh, kind of application, but then I, I believe uh, uh, if I have time, I can we can uh, discuss more. But uh, I have the apologies at the beginning, so I may think some of the slides a little bit too. Uh, how to say that, Cheryl? I hope you uh, with a bad, uh, mathematical background not get bored about it. But no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, again, uh, let's start. And I'm just gonna to move forward. And the first, of course, I always introduce my group before I forgot to acknowledge them, uh, you know, uh, at the end when I rush uh, out of time. So that's why I always put the, the acknowledgement here. So we also, this is a, um, you know, uh, uh, we have a group within the division of sleep and circadian disorders, mm -hmm. but also within the division of sleep medicine at the Harvard Medical School. So we have affiliated to hospital, but also we affiliated to the Harvard Medical School. So this is an interdisciplinary uh, uh, program. And as I, Dr. Kina introduced my background, actually it's a uh, uh, statistical physics, but then I want to use that to the uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after 10 years, or maybe I should say 13 years exactly, uh, we started this uh, 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 medical biodynamics program. We are growing, but still at the early phase. As you can see, we are gonna have lots of different projects. Today, I'm just gonna focus on some of projects using the skill environment. Uh, or fractal uh, concepts, and then how that uh, linked to the circadian physiology and uh, aging research. So there's many people in my group right now and the affiliated faculties here. Uh, I'm gonna mention some of the name during the, uh, when I talk if they're related to the research. So of course, I want to thank all the NIH, some of the uh, uh, foundation to support our work. Uh, this is, could be not updated the slides because we have like a nine, uh, grants right now, there's many projects in the, uh, in the support our work. So in this talk, uh, there's uh, 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 four parts. And of course, uh, when I think about the mathematical background, the strong mathematical background group, I'm gonna uh, ignore those kind of definition. And then, but I do want to uh, raise the, some of the concerns. People use the fractal self-similarity or uh, other words, not so uh, well mathematically uh, defined. So this is something loosely used, okay? So do not try to uh, mm -hmm. get offended. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so uh, we can definitely talk about the terminology in future if uh, we need to modify some of the you know, things, mm -hmm. okay? Um, okay, let's uh, start with the first part. Of course, uh, in uh, last uh, like two or three decades, people understand uh, the fractals are so common in uh, physiology and the biology. And this slide is actually not for uh, your group. And this is uh, most I use for the people from in the medicine. They don't understand what's the fractal. And uh, I need to show some picture, give them the impression, okay, what is the fractal? How that uh, linked to something normal they know, okay? So I think, uh, um, please, I just uh, skip that one. 
Um, and the fractal uh, can be structured fractal. And actually you can see from the, uh, you know, blood vessels in the brain, in the eye, also the structure of the lung, that is all structure uh, uh, fractal pattern. And as uh, use the modeling, there's a tree structure, but also uh, people since like at least uh, like 20 or 30 years ago, they find out that actually these physiological output such as heart rate, and the motor activity, they do have a, such a similar pattern, but they're not mathematically fractal. It's a statistically, the property are uh, similar at different time scale. When you zoom in, zoom in, they are kind of similar, do not have like a dramatic uh, statistical difference. So of course, and um, uh, I'm not gonna to bore you guys to talking about uh, what, what is a fractal, how like linked to the coastline of uh, paradox, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, it's well defined. If there's a fractal uh, features, uh, there's a mathematical link to the power law form. Okay, and then uh, there's many different tools to uh, uh, starting the fractal or scale invariant uh, uh, properties. But one thing you should keep in mind is that in uh, biology or in physiology, uh, there's never such a things called uh, uh, fractal. Why? Because fractal mathematically should be uh, for different time scale, you know, all different time scale, but in the biology of its logical system, it's always have a limited uh, time scale or structural range. Mm -hmm. Beyond that boundary, there will be no fractal. So, so this is not the like mathematical fractal, but this is uh, in some of the uh, certain range, there are such a uh, kind of self uh, similar pattern. And, um, um, uh, for this talk, I'm just introduce one of the methods I usually use, mm -hmm. and the reason is because uh, uh, I was a student, a PhD student in that center at the Boston University, mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. C. K. Peng. Actually, I should say there's uh, like a hero behind him. Mm -hmm. It's called the uh, uh, Sergei Belgov, uh, which is uh, some of the uh, senior scientists in the center. He actually helped uh, C. K. Peng invented this. Uh, the trended fractal analysis. At the beginning, they're trying to look at a short signal, and mm -hmm. then people uh, trying to uh, trying to quantify the self similarity. But when it's short, there's a, like a, something like a trend, other things. So they invited such a uh, uh, so-called trending procedure, trying to remo remove some of the effects of uh, uh, trends. Mm -hmm. Of course, I spent like almost two years to trying to understand. The, the limitation of these methods and how to uh, uh, correctly interpret this method as my part of my PhD thesis, actually. So um, there's lots of public uh, work showing, oh, uh, DFA or the trend differentiation analysis is not so uh, you know, great as they people think. Uh, it is true for some of the case, but uh, uh, I read all the papers. The only regime, just for your guys' information, is when the signal have a diffractal pattern, but the temporal correlation mm -hmm. is uh, anti-correlation, mm -hmm. then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. As long as the, uh, the signal is a positive correlation, and then I think the DFA relatively, the performance is uh, relatively good, okay? We can talk about that separately. But for this talk, I just want to introduce this method. Uh, for people who do not know, of course, I just very briefly, uh, uh, tells you how this method works. So basically the method is looking at a different time scale, choose a time window to look at the fluctuation uh, amplitude. But when they look at the fluctuation amplitude, what they do is there's several steps. They need to integrate the signal, remove the uh, chains using polynomial function, and then look at the residual, which is called the fluctuation uh, 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 amplitude. And then you can do that same thing for different time scale you got such a function and mathematically can prove if there's a fractal or self uh, uh, similar pattern, mm -hmm. then the slope should a straight line. Actually, the physical meaning for this uh, uh, line function is the slope. If you, uh, I mean, when I say slope, it's not uh, accurate. This should be the slope for if you plot the log log plot because it's a power law function. And this slope mm -hmm. for the white noise is uh, 0.5. And as I can show you, you shuffle the data, destroy the temporal correlation, mm -hmm. Then this is 0.5. But for many physiological signal, uh, the alpha or this slope, we call it scale, uh, uh, scaling exponent is around the one. 
Okay, it depends on uh, which system we're talking about. And then this is some of the uh, things we need to just keep in mind, mm -hmm. so, okay. And then, uh, of course, the first uh, well-established uh, um, physiological signal is actually heart rate or heartbeat uh, fluctuations. And, uh, and then there's lots of work from uh, Gene Stanley in my uh, PhD thesis, the widest group, and uh, uh, Eric Goldberg that did some of the very good uh, 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 advertisement about the, this type of work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just like for our physical uh, physicist, we trying to understand what they mean by the uh, fractal in the physiological system, actually. Uh, the scaling variant around one is very intriguing for the uh, people from physics because um, Point of five, as I mentioned, is the white noise, which is usually happened if you think about the water when the molecule can random move. But mm -hmm. when the ice, uh, when the water becomes ice, then something happened that is uh, uh, kind of very regular. So, so but, uh, this physiological structure in temporal uh, correlation stay. Point of, around point of five. It's not water, it's not ice. Actually, it's in the between water and ice. We call it the transition. It's a water ice transition. So that's why the scale invariant uh, behavior is so attractive for the people in the physics at the beginning. Okay? And of course, this also uh, introduced lots of discussion about uh, what's the purpose for the physiological control. Is it uh, stable states or this is really transition? So I'm not going to talk about that today. And then there's lots of great uh, uh, you know, talks by uh, other people in the review papers. And we can, uh, if you are interested, we can talk about mm -hmm. it separately. But one of the uh, take home messages is, they said physiological physical system at a critical point is that a physiological system also at a critical point of course and we now kind of agree yes why because you want to re uh, maintain the internal regularity but you want to adapt to the environment input to flexibility so there's a balance between regular or adaptability so so that's the concept here okay Okay, I'm not going to talk too much about the, about the theory, but uh, for the uh, people so many years, there's different physiological system have a, such a fractal pattern, gait, respiration. And then I want to uh, focus on one is because we used this uh, signal in many of the Alzheimer disease study, which is the uh, mortal activity fluctuation. Mm -hmm. And this is a long time ago as a PhD student, my mentor, Plama Ivanov, and also my later uh, postdoc uh, men mentor, Stephen Shea, they, uh, we got some of the um, active watch and then we uh, got the signal from the patient. I should say this is control health, control adults at different uh, uh, you know, environment condition at home, in laboratory, with some of the crazy constant the posture to look at the circadian rhythm, also another force, the syncing protocol was uh, modified at day and night Wow. like uh, a lens to also look at the circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so as a student, I was uh, just a uh, uh, curiosity to say, hey, let's check the motor activity. At the beginning, none of them say you should try because the, everything we believe at that time is your behavior depends on your scheduled uh, events. But then when I uh, performed the analysis and the I show in, I actually, this is like, uh, look like the uh, fractals in the heart, uh, heart rate of dynamics, similar, mm -hmm. very similar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is the uh, most uh, striking uh, finding at that time is it doesn't depend on the environment or the physical activity level. And uh, I think all of you guys know when we perform the DFA, if the overall standard deviation of the signal is reduced or then, this is a vertical shift. That's what exactly we see here when the people at home is higher mm -hmm. intercept, Y intercept, but at the in laboratory is reduced. Despite such a huge uh, difference in the amplitude, the fractal pattern indicated by such a slope scaling uh, uh, exponent are similar. Okay. So this is some of the things which we at the beginning we uh, say, hey, is that the fractal? Uh, some artifacts by the device, by anything. 
If this is the case, what about the heart bit interval? There should not be some artifact there. So we did some of the testing. I'm going to not going to tell you the details, but we put the device on different place, mm -hmm. elevator, rotating table, and then we found, oh, no, actually not that case. In most of the case, uh, we find that the slope for those uh, are 0.5. So, mm -hmm. so we, are, we are so confident that time, this is really something intrinsic, but we cannot prove it until you tell us people, what is the changes? Can you see the changes? We cannot find any changes in 2004 to 2000, uh, 2000 actually uh, to 2004. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for us to even publish this paper. <laughs> <laughs> and we end up publishing on the physical age. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it, yeah, but it turns out that this is the most uh, important early work um, we, we published. And I'm going to show you why later. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, of course, uh, uh, after many years, we show in, not in a human, but also rats, mice, and the Drosophila, they have a similar uh, fractal activity pattern and uh, indicate by similar slope, even though uh, depends on the resolution of the recording, uh, there's some subtle difference here and there, but, but overall, this same cell has a, a universal common features, the fractal uh, measures there. Interesting. And the reason, um, I'm gonna to keep working on this uh, 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 fractal physiology for such a long time is this because of this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing some of the postal training and I using uh, the fractal uh, measures to do something in, uh, in this talk, I'm not gonna cover that in the heartbeat fluctuation and cardio risk. But then I was wondering, should I continue or switch to totally to circadian uh, physiology or biology? And then one day, um, uh, um, Sir Power Nurse uh, was invited to give a presentation at Harvard Medical School uh, mm -hmm. for this uh, you know, lecture. And then I was, uh, according to my advisor, I was not so, uh, you know, how to say that? I'm not sleep. I was not sleeping, but I was not uh, paying attention. And then <laughs> until then I said the, the last uh, five greatest idea in biology in the next century is about the understand the scale environment or fractal is oh. one top of the idea. So, so that's why I said, okay, since uh, other people interested in such a, like a big guy, maybe I should continue a little bit more. <laughs> so that's the story starting, okay? So 2007, just remember this day. And of course, there's many other uh, people interested in the fractal physiology and there's such a, a section journal there in the frontier in uh, physiology. Uh, actually, I'm the one of the I guess the editorial board and mm -hmm. then the editorial board in uh, other uh, you know section. Mm -hmm. So now let me tell you after I heard that the 2007 supports uh, think about the, the mechanism of fractal. I, as a student, as a, a postdoc, I was thinking, okay, what what should I do? And then I talked to my uh, uh, my mentor said, yes, there's lots of uh, modeling in physics but nothing really so uh, uh, you know, attractive in biology or physiology. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, and the why we should start, okay? That's the story started. And then what we, uh, and then my mentor, Stephen Shea, uh, he is a physiologist, a uh, circadian uh, uh, physiologist. And then said, well, what about you talking about the model in mathematical physical system? Mm -hmm. What's the requirement for the uh, fractal mm -hmm. uh, patterns? And then I said, um, we need to add a network, right? Fractal means there's lots of, uh, if you think about the water, there's lots of molecular, they link to each other. There are many things they, they talk to each other. There must be a network. Otherwise, there's two things there, a rhythm, there cannot be a, net, uh, a fractal. There's nothing there. So one of the concepts that that time we come up with is there must be different type of process they couple. And the one uh, simple idea will be, is that possible there's a different uh, physiological, biological process functioning mm -hmm. at different time scale. If they're coupled, they have a network, they generate such a fractal pattern. That's the original uh, simple, simple idea, which mm -hmm. we have uh, no evidence. Mm -hmm. And then we went through 
many of the rhythms at that time. I just draw some of them as uh, like uh, uh, things you, you, you already know in the uh, uh, biology or physiology. And then we look through those EEG waves, respiration, heartbeat, ultradian rhythm, digestion, sleep, wake transition. Uh, you may heard about the, who Andrew Phillips talk about the, the REM, non-REM sleep, right? Yeah. During our presentation. That's actually mm -hmm. one of the related to the ultradian rhythm, 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's also ask the digestion, like animal digest the food, you measure the uh, procedure is like uh, two hours, one hour or five hours, depends on the size of the animal. And then of course, since I'm in the division of sleep security disorders, the most uh, attracting uh, things for us is the circadian rhythm or daily rhythm, which is so uh, well uh, things. And then that's much, much more, okay? And then uh, we said, okay, if that's the case, is that possible really circadian system also involved in such a like a fractal regulation? That's how we have a no idea, but we just hypothesize that's the network picture and we did that. Okay, so we focus, focus on that. And of course, uh, as we learn, the circadian network is very, also very complex. There's uh, like a central clock uh, located the hypothalamus uh, supercassin nuclear. And there's also peripheral clock and other local clock in the brain. But we have a good idea about the SCN is really the hub for the network and is uh, really for the adaptation to the day and night pattern. So that's, that's what we started to uh, think about. Okay, let's just do something very simple use animal study. So what we do is we look at some of the data, our colleagues do some animal study in Amsterdam and remove the SCN and they check the uh, circadian rhythm at that time, but we said, let's took, look at the fractal pattern. Oh. It turns out this very dramatic difference, like rats in the uh, SCN intact is great, like human have such a beautiful fractal uh, pattern with slope uh, uh, around the uh, 0.9 or 1. Oh. But after SCN legion, then what happened, we can see is the dramatic effect actually is a large time scale. Nice. Great, then about the two or three hours. So we use four hours nice. to cut off at that time. It's become totally white noise. Nice. I just remind you if the alpha uh, 0.5, that means white noise. Nice. So, so this is the first, I would say, not the con uh, only um, how to say that the quantitatively changes, but it's qualitative changes. Mm. It's really yeah. becomes white noise at large time scale. But of course, at a small time scale, there's still some of the uh, changes there, but uh, which I'm going to uh, uh, tell you a little bit uh, later. But the uh, idea is at that time for this uh, rest, they do not have other changes, but only the SCN legion. Actually, this slope actually increased a little bit, not uh, too much, but significantly increased a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then starting the point, we, we think at that time, we think this is very exciting. And then we got the paper published and what's next, okay? What's next? And the people asking me at that time, oh, is that means, uh, of course, not from people from mathematics, okay, or physics. <laughs> you, uh, you guys were not going to ask this question, but I got lots of questions asking me. Uh, okay, so you remove the SCN, you remove that, the fractal changes. That means at the large time scale, fractals like the daily uh, rhythmicity. So I'm just let you know, I said, uh, mathematically, they are quite different. How can you think about that way? And then they said, oh, maybe physiologically, they are kind of equal. And then I have to convince them that's not the case, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so I did something, used the animal study again. Uh, people know when they remove the SCM, but they, you can use the food in chain, mm -hmm. the 24 hour rhythm. And uh, you provide the food at the right time, 12 hour, and mm -hmm. then the animal uh, activity rhythm increase. So that's what mm -hmm. we, find out for both the intact animal as an legion animal, the sum of the index circadian uh, amplitude does improve. However, if you look at the, the uh, uh, fractal, I said, yeah. not really much happened after a uh, food uh, 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 entrainment using right. 12 hour right. food cycle. Right. So which uh, we, I try to give the message, uh, say, okay, so fractal are not equal to the daily rhythm, which uh, physiologically also is the case. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, then later we trying to uh, ask more question about how the uh, really what's the origin of this fractal pattern in motor mm -hmm. activity. We not only look at the SCM, but look at the DMH, those are medial hypothalamus nuclei, mm -hmm. which is one of the important the nuclear to convert SCM impact on the uh, motor activity. Nice. Okay. And then actually, uh, this is a very uh, exciting uh, features at that time. What we find is very uh, interesting. When you remove the DMH, the pattern also changed, similar like the SCM, but at large time scale, the uh, correlation property is not uh, like white noise. It's towards white noise, like mm -hmm. 0.7 the slope, but not goes to uh, very close to 0.5. However, if you continue to remove the SCN, this do becomes around 0.5. Mm -hmm. So this is something tells us there must be some of the either mm -hmm. uh, uh, neuron circuitry to pass through the connections to SCN DMH and the impact the uh, motor activity. But then it triggers uh, more questions actually, right? And uh, mathematically, if you think about the one A, B, C, that uh, the final outcome is the fractal uh, activity pattern. The A is SCN and the B now is DMH. And we're thinking, well, what's going on? Is that just because of the SCN generates such a pattern through the uh, one of the DMH and it goes to the motor activity and SDN also project to other place go there. Is mm -hmm. that the, the case? So, and then this picture actually was gonna to, um, well, uh, I think I include a little bit more here. Let me, since I think you guys have mathematical background, this is some something really puzzling me. Let me, let me uh, give you a, such uh, things. <laughs> if it's confusing, just forget about it. So uh -huh. one thing at that time, after we removed the DMH, we uh -huh. uh, did something else. What we did is uh, people uh, at that time were very interested in so-called the food anticipation animal. So in other words, if you give the food at the same time for uh -huh. several days or one week, uh -huh. the animal trying to remember the time of the uh -huh. food available. Yeah. So that happened is we call the food anticipation. And you can see here, when you have the food restriction, the animal gonna have a increased activity before the food available. So this is something very physiological or biological uh, mm -hmm. in a hot, still hot topic. I think they're still arguing what controls such a food anticipation. But the one thing I want you guys to help me is so you can think about is mm -hmm. uh, regarding the modeling of the fractal uh, pattern in the mm -hmm. activity is. Rem remember I said, remove the DMH, Reduce mm -hmm. the fractal, remove the SC and completely abolish the fractal pattern of large time scale. Mm -hmm. However, if you do that, use the foot anticipation, mm -hmm. foot restriction protocol, mm -hmm. what happened to those animals? So, this is something which are very, very tricky. I don't know how to uh, you know, understand that. First, if it's intact animal, really it's a slope, it's straight line, mm -hmm. but you use something called a food restriction, which means food only available very like two hours or four hours there. And then this time cue against the circadian uh, rhythm, right? Uh -huh. they, they force the animal to be active. So, and then if you look at those animals uh, go through the uh, food anticipation or food restriction, you can see uh -huh. actually the fractal pattern changes, degraded, oh, wow. which is expected. Why? Because you introduce the time cue conflict to the endogenous circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. which I haven't showed the, uh, in the animal study, they use the same other things also can perturb the uh, fractal pattern, okay? Like a shift work or other things, okay? Mm -hmm. This is not the, uh, something uh, surprising. Mm -hmm. The surprising thing is if we look at the DMH legion or DMH plus SCN legion animal, mm -hmm. what happened is, when there's a foot restriction, they help restore the fractal pattern. Mm -hmm. so, so this is really puzzling for us. Why, uh -huh. when you have a foot restriction, which is a con uh, conflict time Q, then dis not destroy, but the degraded uh -huh. fractal pattern uh -huh. for the impact animal. However, not, but improve mm -hmm. that for DMH SCN legion animal. So I think I think that's something you can think about it. I know you may t tell me 
yeah, when they remove the SCN, you totally remove the clock, but uh -huh. have the the restriction you you kind of help with the yeah another uh, time queue yeah. exactly yeah however what what happened to dmh that is something really really puzzling for us okay i hope i can have some mathematical background uh, mm -hmm. uh, people at that time but anyway so uh, uh there's more okay just hold that aside and i'm going to continue uh talking about the the idea at that time so then people and we ask is that possible SCN generate all the fractal pattern? Of course, you already know my answer mm -hmm. uh, from here. Maybe it's not, not like, like that, but but that time we, we ask this way. Why? Because SCN have uh, so many neurons, 30,000, uh, 50,000 neurons. Is that possible to fractal all from the SCN itself and then to uh, pass to the DMH other place? Okay, that's the kind of a concept at that time. We did such a study with um, uh, Yoka Mayer at uh -huh. Net uh, Netherlands. Look at the uh, in vivo and the in vitro uh -huh. SCN neural activity. Okay, so the concept is very simple. If it's possible, everything from the SCN, then we measure the SCN neural activity. Helpfully, we can find also fractal pattern in the SCN neural activity. Okay, and the same thing. If SCN can hold the network and uh, uh, the generate such a fractal pattern, they should have a sim similar in mm -hmm. the uh, uh, in vivo and the in vitro, okay? And the people know SCN have the uh, rhythm, both in vivo and the in vitro, okay? But then that's what we did. Very simple. Uh, in vivo, SCN neural activity do have a very beautiful uh, fractal pattern range from a few seconds to like hours, 10 hours, I show here. Unfortunately, when they put the SCN, they try to uh, harvest the SCN as a whole, mm -hmm. not just part of SCN, try to like get the whole SCN out, put the dishes, mm -hmm. even though they have a circadian rhythm, but mm -hmm. the pattern is really not a fract uh, fractal or self, uh, uh, you know, similar because it's a curve in the power law, mm -hmm. a plot. So you can see this is dramatic difference. And then of course, uh, I'm not blindly fitted the, the, the data trying to get the slope. We look at the, the data, you can see this is not a uh, power law function, okay? So that that is something which should tell us at that time, SCN itself may not be important. There may be some of the feedback between the SCN and the outside of uh, other circadian uh, uh, you know, a network or other physiological process to generate the fractal, okay? Mm -hmm. So of course, now we know this is a huge, uh, com very complex process between the SCA and the local uh, 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 circadian clock and peripheral clock. So, and then here, that's what we trying to uh, come up with, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that a possible there's a different physiological process talk to SCN like DMH other things their network here and at, of course we do not have a good idea for example peripheral circadian oscillator and oscillate at different time scale as I mentioned like mm -hmm. digestion food those things they couple and generate such a uh, like uh, scale invariant this is actually the one project that I want to push uh, uh, about the uh, nine years ago Mm -hmm. But uh, there's one student at doing starting some project. But when I submit my first R1, and the reviewer uh -huh. said, You propose too much, just focus on human uh, study without the modeling and animal study. Uh -huh. So you should submit the, another two R1s for that. So I said, Okay, now let's just submit some of the uh, Alzheimer related the human. A study mm -hmm. and that time. And then we got, of course, you know, we, we got funded. I'm going to show you the result later. <laughs> That's how this project got the uh, hand there for a long time. But we did some of the work. The idea is very simple. If you have uh, some of the uh, circadian nodes, they have a circadian mm -hmm. rhythm, they have other process function, different right. time scales, they couple. Is that possible? You can use such a like a network, uh, coupling a network to mm -hmm. explain the, uh, you know, things. Anyway, some of the students did some of the work. They're trying to reproduce what happened in SCN leaching animals. Mm -hmm. when, they, when they do the uh, tune some of the parameter, tune the regularity randomness, they do can show some of the similar pattern there. Uh, however, we never got it published because as I told you, 
I got funded for another project and student actually left. So, so this project, they were kind of hanging there for a long time. <laughs> so here you used a, a coupled oscillatory model to simulate this pattern? Yes, yes. Mm, I see. Yes. So if some of uh, your students, you have uh, any idea uh, uh -huh. like to do this, I'm gonna very happy to see, you know, because I thought this is very important in terms of you can link the circadian rhythm to uh -huh. different other logical rhythm and explain why it's a fractal. Oh, okay. yeah, I see, I see. Okay, Ooh. please keep that in mind. <laughs> oh, indeed, yeah, okay. I see. Um, of course, now I want to uh, switch it to really some of the application, as I told you, this is really not something like uh, modeling. It's really uh, purely application. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, um, <laughs> I think uh, I was, I, I know, uh, I just talked to someone, student, I forgot, I, sorry, uh, there's too many of them. Tokyo, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. Mention about this paper. That's actually one of the first paper we demonstrate the physiological meaning of the fractal activity pattern. And this is 2009. Remember, we first published the paper 2004. Actually, we have a difficulty published 2003, 2004. Mm -hmm. Then at this time, we said, oh, let's look at uh, uh, some of the young elderly, elderly with AD, something like that. Mm -hmm. This is the study. They really attract some of the eyes of the people right. say, oh, it's, it's important. It's not just artifacts. Okay, uh -huh. so basically, uh, very uh, uh, shortly introduced. So, so basically, for the people, uh, older people, the fractal pattern changes, similar to the SN Legion animals, mm -hmm. the slope at large time scale they uh, uh, decrease. Okay, especially for those people with uh, elderly with AD. Okay, so this is some of the. Uh, uh, I think it's kind of like a, a breakthrough for people to think this is important. Okay. And for us, and then Yokomeya said, "Okay, since you did that for the human, let's look at the animal." Okay, mm -hmm. at that time, there's no Alzheimer disease animal model too much, right. but only Asian. the aging. Mm -hmm. And uh, she showed, yes, there's similar aging uh, process there, and the changes uh, uh, happened to the mouse is about one to one point five years. Okay, I see. but the one thing she added to this project, is telling us is. If you deprive the exercise of the of the mouse, what they do is they lock the wheeling, running wheel. You know, uh -huh. the running wheel, the mouse like to run right. it. But if you lock that and you kind of, uh, after a few weeks, mm -hmm. all the mice, the fractal pattern, large time scale, mm -hmm. they kind of reduced. And it's dramatically reduced. It's not just like, a, you know, small. it's much more than the aging effect. So mm -hmm. this is uh, some of the, uh, things here uh, she put there and make this one can go to another time to the PNS. Otherwise, I think people say just repeat what the other people mm -hmm. did. Right? <laughs> so, um, and then this is something encouraging, but we still think about that. Keep that in mind. Exercise is important for the at least animal mm -hmm. to maintain the fractal. And then uh, I want to mention the other work follow the, uh, the, um, the, uh, with Susan Somaran, the human work. And then we said, okay, what's the mechanism, right? As I said, in the animal, we know it's SCN. What about in human, right? We had a logical question. And what we did is we did the China say, use the post-motion uh, study to look at the SCN neurons and then check how that linked to the fractal pattern. As I told you, uh, with U Somran, we find the two regions. So basically in the latest study, we said, okay, just use the alpha at large times minus alpha at the small times to check out the uh, change of the fractal pattern. And actually we find a, a great result uh, in terms of association of this change of fractal pattern mm -hmm. with the uh, two major uh, uh, vessel present positive assay neuron and also neuron cancer. This is two of the important uh, you know, uh, uh, as the neurons within the, uh, for the circadian, uh, uh, you know, modulation. So basically you have a more uh, uh, degraded uh, uh, fractal pattern, the neural numbers uh, are smaller, okay? And at that time, this first time also we prove there's some of the mm -hmm. association between the fractal pattern changes with the AD 
severity. They use some of the occipital, some of the stain to look at mm -hmm. the, uh, the association. But this is a really small size of the uh, uh, study. And also um, what the dramatic uh, 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 message for me is the fractal measure, this fractal measure are more associated with the, uh, neuron changes within the SCN compared to, I think it's a seven other circadian uh, measures combined. So it's more linked to the to the SCN changes. That's how we we find. Oh, this is uh, interesting. Maybe this is another measure people mm -hmm. should consider. Mm -hmm. Okay. After that, then we kind of have a confidence. It looks like um, fractal measure, at least fractal activity measure, really linked to the SCN function, and then we are asking the question based on this and, uh, and another PNS paper showing the AB pathology. What is the really aging effect and the link to the Alzheimer's disease? That's the starting point. So basically all the previous study used a cross-sectional design. And then I said, uh, that's the first hour one uh, <laughs> we got. Uh, and then we want to see longitudinal changes. And then I use in, I contact the uh, David Bernard and the Russia mm -hmm. Alzheimer's Disease Center. They have an annual, uh, they have some of the huge database ongoing human study, look at the longitudinal changes uh, in older people. So basically the idea is, can we use the fractal pattern to link to the uh, uh, pathological changes or cognitive changes in the people when they develop the uh, Alzheimer's disease? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, brush through of the results here because I spent too, too much time already. <laughs> um, so the this database, again, uh, very quickly started from 1997 uh, uh, and then the ActiGraph added to 2005. So they have annual follow up with ActiGraph and also have a other neuron psychological test cognition. And also after the people die, they have the post mortem tissues. Okay. And then what we did is uh, we first check the um, baseline fractal uh, pattern, active pattern, and then we show uh, is that a link to the future risk for Alzheimer's dementia? We do find such a case only for the, uh, let me let me show to say this way. Again, we have a two scaling exponent at two times scale. One is less than about two hours. Another one is large time scale. And actually both time scale can predict the Alzheimer's dementia risk. However, usually people control for the age, sex, education, and many, many other variables. Mm -hmm. For the uh, large time scale, the scaling exponent greater than about two of the uh, three hours is so strong associated with aging. Every time you put age there, mm -hmm. the effect will be gone. Mm -hmm. So it turns out only alpha one for some reason after you control for the age or many other things, they still can predict the future risk for uh, Alzheimer's dementia. So, so this is something which is uh, also very uh, uh, surprising, but also uh, intriguing. You can think about it. Before, the half of my presentation talked about the strong effect is the of a, a large time scale scaling environment linked to the age and dementia. But now suddenly I switch the saying, Actually, at small time scale, even though it's so robust, but then subtle changes they predict the future. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and also, of course, we confirm also this uh, small time scale, less than two hours uh, scale invariant, also predict the uh, mild the cognitive impairment. Okay. I'm going to go through. And then we check uh, many other uh, conditions like uh, frailty, disability, and even mortality. We show. I'm, I'm going to go through very quickly because I want to save time mm -hmm. to talk about some other things. Mm -hmm. So basically, the alpha one always mm -hmm. predict the, all those uh, 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 health outcomes, which mm -hmm. is uh, risk of, for the Alzheimer's disease. And also we show in the alpha one also linked to many of the MRI, like gray matter volumes, you number of the regions. This is the regions all already after control for the bufferoni. If you do not do that, it's a huge 
wide region uh, uh, gray matter linked to the fractal, uh, you know, uh, alpha mm -hmm. values. Okay. And then we also did the ask a question, oh, when you say that prediction, what about the changes over time, right? Because they have a annual changes uh, uh, active graph uh, recording. And we did look at alpha one, alpha two is a small time scale, large time scale. It looks like both of them change with the aging, but alpha two looks like it changes faster. Uh -huh. And the most uh, striking thing you can see here is the, after the people onset of MCI, uh -huh. and dementia, uh -huh. this process accelerated, okay? See. This is also more than triple, uh -huh. so alpha one, and alpha two. So, so this is, uh, I think this is something very intriguing is, not to just predict the future risk, but also the changes of cognition and, and the onset of dementia accelerated the process, the aging process of this, uh, you know. So this is something we already know, there's a bi-directional, uh, link between the uh, uh -huh. uh, fractal regulation and uh, AV uh, uh, progression. And of course, recently we also checked the uh, preclinical uh, pre AD pathology using the data uh, from the uh, Washington uh, uh, St. Louis, Washington University St. Louis, and there was uh, the co collaborator there. And this is something uh, very new uh, last year, maybe, uh, I forgot. Oh. I, I forgot to re, uh, revise these slides. Anyway, what we find is if you use that the difference between the two alpha, then that does link to the uh, some of the, uh, for example, the uh, AD pathology, even the people are cognitive from normal. So this is a, a some of link to the uh, pathology using the uh, uh, changes of the fractal pattern. But for some reason, maybe it's the data sets or sample size, this is more pronounced in a woman compared to men. So uh, we're still wondering whether we should increase sample size or check better, or this is something uh, else. For example, age is also a factor there. So mm. anyway, so this is something I want to uh, maybe uh, stop here. Wow. So I, I want to just want to con convince you in this talk, I only focus on the fractal, but actually we did a lot of work uh, using the other circadian measures. It looks like the circadian measures, uh, uh, many of them also can predict the, uh, uh, you know, the dementia and also uh, progression of the Alzheimer's disease also can accelerate the circadian measure changes. Mm -hmm. But the fractal seems very unique in terms of you can control for other measures still significant. So it looks like there's some of the complementary but overlap the information between the fractal measure and the traditional circadian measure. For time being, I cannot uh, go over all the results mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm, but I just want to summarize here. We do have a different project uh, funded by at least, uh, I said there's two hour ones right now and another six uh, uh, you know, small uh, grants, mm -hmm. not small in terms of size, but uh, in uh, duration. And then we want to check Check whether we can combine the fractal measures or other measures can better predict the dementia, and then what is genetic, uh, you know, basics for those, uh, uh, you know, fractal or circadian, mm -hmm. and how that interact with the environmental changes like the shift worker, other things affect this. As I showed you, mm -hmm. some of the uh, changes shift worker do. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not show. Have time to yeah. do have a. Uh, perturb the fractal uh, physiology and the fractal activity measures. I see. And also we wondering what's the pathway, right? What is the pathway? You said there's a change in circadian fractal measures, what's that? So I think we are so interesting in a few things. One of them is the autonomic function changes. Actually, that is linked to some of the, your ongoing project uh, information, and immune system. That's mm -hmm. what we are checking right now, actually have uh, some of the grant linked to the delirium. And Dr. Uh, Le Gao is now also uh, doing that specifically, how mm -hmm. that uh, uh, these changes linked to the uh, autonomic function, linked to the, the uh, immune system or information and linked to the delirium and how that the delirium can increase the risk for dementia or dementia increase risk for delirium. So, so many things ongoing and also of course the machine learning, which uh, personally 
I do not trust the machine learning 100%. I think this is just something very fancy, but um, uh, um, if, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I mean, don't take me wrong. Right. I have a grant for that, but uh, I think they're still on the beginning. You know, it's, uh, it's not uh, like so magic as people think. But anyway, so we have many different projects ongoing. And then uh, some of the things directly link to the uh, fractal, but some of them link to more, uh, you know, physiological mm -hmm. or pathological pathways here uh -huh. I mentioned. Okay. I see. Cool. okay, so I think I'm, time is almost up. I huh? want to, uh, uh, you know, let you know there's a final uh, uh -huh. recent worry. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say is that uh, we published this paper, but the media chasing our us to, to cool. let us to explain why why is that, how important that is. Basically, uh, we are interested in the circadian uh, and the fractal pattern of daily activity or rhythm. Mm -hmm. And then you know, one of the uh, interesting things in the uh, people with aging uh -huh. is they have a more like a daytime napping or like dozing during the daytime. Mm -hmm. That's actually one of the sign we believe mm -hmm. is for the uh, circadian disruption, which mm -hmm. is linked to also fractal uh, uh, changes. We think that is something which we want to check. And then when I talk to uh, Leng Yu from uh, UCSF, mm -hmm. she has uh, our zero zero uh, grant to look at the data. And I said, why don't you use our Rush database? Look at that. That's why we did that. And then the result is very uh, straightforward. Basically, we find when daytime napping duration or frequency, they're going to change over time, mm -hmm. increase over time and also accelerated after MCI or uh, AD dementia. Mm -hmm. The same thing, they can predict the future mm -hmm. AD dementia. So that's why all those media reporters, they chasing us, asking us, oh, wow, is that a napping bat? Then <laughs> we always try to be cautious and no, we are not, not saying napping is bad. Mm -hmm. We are just saying, Exist. When the people are getting old, there's a changes in mm -hmm. the day and night or sleep week cycle, mm -hmm. the day and night napping could be uh, a sign for them to have some of the neurological or neuron degenerations in the brain, which triggers the process and the predict the Alzheimer's dementia. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, so I want to highlight this one. And the still, um, it's published only in a few weeks, and then people oh. still sending an uh, uh, email asking us, can you do something? And, uh, and you know, so so this is uh, according to them, they said this is the most uh, uh, hot topic after COVID. You know, when right. the COVID, things, they have the media report loss. But mm -hmm. anyway, so I want to just tell you guys, there's something here. If you have ongoing study, we should look at that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Um, wow. Yeah. The other two things I want mm -hmm. to mention is. Um, Okay. If you work related to the circadian disturbance and mm -hmm. the aging related disorder, like mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, Parkinson, whatever, we do have a special issues the advanced oh. biology. I see. Uh, the general is nice, not a huge impact, but it's about the four or five. Mm -hmm. The good thing about it is, uh, as uh, the uh, 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 guest, uh, the editor there, I convinced them there's no charge fee for this one. We promise there's some of the quick review. And also after the publication, mm -hmm. the people also are invited to participate at uh, Harvard, the symposium. We can organize to present the work, share the work with all other people, okay? I see. And this is something which you can uh, interest to let me know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And of course, and of course, if you want to hear a little bit more, uh, we do have a symposium, the sleep conference this year. Uh -huh. I invited the uh, uh, three people. They're all talking about the circadian sleep and the daily mm -hmm. activity rhythm, how that link to the mm -hmm. Alzheimer. And then basically, uh, we welcome the people getting there, give some opinion, discuss about the updated uh, you know, view about the disturbing the daily activity oh, pattern in Alzheimer's. Okay. Wow. So, so I want to thank you very much. And uh, really, I think this is brushes through some of the work so many mm -hmm. years. I picked some of them here. I hope you guys can use that either as uh, how to say that experience and guide you 
you know, career uh, you know, development, or we can initiate some of other discussion for some of the uh, projects. Mm -hmm. so I want to stop here, and if you have any questions, uh, go ahead, please. Oh, thanks so much for the great talk, Dr. Kun Hu. Uh, uh, there is a first, there was a question in the chatting room. Let me read it for you. Do you think we can manipulate food anticipatory response to improve patients who already have Alzheimer's? Well, first, I would say the idea is definitely uh, uh, the right direction. I don't know if I have the slides here. The only thing uh, we know is the, uh, in terms of the uh, circadian and the fractal, I know, for example, light treatment mm. too can improve the fractal and the circadian. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of Alzheimer's disease, I know people are trying to do that. I think mm. the, the challenge is you have a really control many other things. Mm -hmm. And then the, I like that this question is, yes, food entrainment is really something which can help you to manipulate the circadian system, mm -hmm. to help the enjoyment, and potentially to improve uh, many biomarkers mm -hmm. for the uh, Alzheimer's risk. But again, I, I should say, um, I don't know the answer. I don't know, uh, you know, it's, a, it's like, a, could be like causal relationship between the circadian and Alzheimer. Uh, I, but I think people should try that. <laughs> Actually, at least look at some of the data, right? Mm -hmm. Look at the food and the, the daily food intake and see. But right. I do have some evidence for that, though. For example, uh, timing of the food affect the glucose control, insulin, other things. And that's linked to the vascular uh, function and also diabetes, many other things, which is all risk factor for the Alzheimer's uh, dementia, mm -hmm. right? So. So in, in that sense, I do believe mm -hmm. there's a hope there using the food as a, an entrainment. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, and, and then uh, there are two. Okay, maybe uh, Hyokpyo, you can go first and then Jinsu. Uh, probably I have uh, tons of questions, so I, oh. it is better to go first for Jinsu. Jinsu? Okay, yeah, Jinsu, do you want to go Hyokyo. first? Uh huh. So, yeah. Uh, Please introduce you. yourself, you. Jinsu, first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you uh, for a very interesting talk, Dr. Hu. I'm an assistant professor at Postec, and my name is Jinsu. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, good to see you. My question is I, I thought the fractality can be interpreted as also a predictability. So, if a given time uh, series is fractality. I think if we only monitor the short time scale and we can predict the, how the time series behaves in longer time scale because they have the same structure. Uh -huh. Is there any okay. such direction to study something? This is a, some, something which I, I really like the question because we ask the same question ourselves. But uh -huh. as I mentioned, um, it is possible when you have a good fractal, Mm -hmm. You have a straight line, you, you are the same. But mm -hmm. when there's a pathological changes, you don't know which yeah. part can change faster, change slow. Mm -hmm. Actually, I showed you only alpha one, alpha two, which is uh, separated by the uh, around the two hours, which mm -hmm. is actually arbitrary. And actually we now have another paper still under review. We're trying to look at actually, in, very interesting. I don't know what to uh, to, to tell you relate to your question, but one, for your question is, the changes of alpha at different time scale mm -hmm. could be quite different. We mm -hmm. What we show here is, even though I said alpha one below two hours, mm -hmm. if you look at the, the below two hours, the changes of local slope could be different for less than 10 minutes from 10 to, mm -hmm. so that's why uh, I think uh, uh, your question is relevant. And however, we appreciate that one. We ask the same thing, why? If you have a very, Short time scale, you do not record in such a long time, right? That's your point. And we yep. said the same thing. And actually, the good news for you is internal, is confidential, is for some reason, we find the fractal pattern less than 10 minutes, around 10 minutes, can already predict the, uh, the uh, Alzheimer's dementia. Mm. Less than 10 minutes. 
Mm. However, we have in the system to check how many how many uh, signal you need, how long to get that ten minutes, mm. right? In order to uh, rely get a reliable result. So I think this is some of the question we can uh, maybe uh, next time you have a chance I can show some of the new results we can discuss more. Yeah, but very important question. Thank you so much. Okay, and then there was question in chatting room from uh, Dr. Kamian Park. Uh, in a biological sense, what could be tuning parameters and order parameters that are uh, leading to fractal fluctuations? Like uh, consider as a critical point. That's his questions. Do, kind of, I guess he's asking that there is any some source of such fractal fluctuations. Uh, I think if you asking about from the physiological or biological point of view. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is st still, as I mentioned, uh, I tells you some result, but actually we are also challenged. What's the resources? Why there's a such a fractal, right? Until now, we, we haven't got any physiological meaningful model mm -hmm. <laughs> for the fractal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at least uh, in this case, we show you that's linked to circadian, but circadian is only looks like a response for large time scale, but what about the small time scale? I want to uh, trying to uh, give me some, give you some of my hypothesis or speculation. So basically you can see all the results indicate circadian is linked to large time scale fractal pattern, right. but they do somehow change a little bit of small time scale. However, mm -hmm. the small time scale is so sensitive or can predict all the risk instead of uh, large time scale. Why is that? But large time scale is linked to the agent, very tightly linked to the agent. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking is, for example, if you think about the, your movement, mm -hmm. spontaneous movement, right? Not the, not the control. Uh, that's one thing I need to focus. I need to uh, focus uh, mm -hmm. to, I forgot to mention, trying to get the spontaneous uh, movement but if you really control that, of course, you can destroy all those fractal patterns, by the way, okay? So spontaneous uh, uh, movement, what does that tell us? That tells two things. One is your movement is linked to what your, maybe some of the process linked to the cognition. For example, I want to do something. There's a, like a memory I would do here and then, there's some of the small changes. That is some of the result. I mean, the I hypothesize speculation again. Your cognition control your motor function, mm -hmm. tells you what to do. That is linked motor mm -hmm. function and your mm -hmm. cognition. Mm -hmm. And that is some one of the hypotheses. Actually, Aaron Buckman in the Rush, they said motor function is mm -hmm. one of the region mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. linked to the Alzheimer dementia. Mm -hmm. So control of the small movement mm -hmm. relate to some of the neuron degeneration of the Alzheimer disease. That is why I believe we saw at small time scale more predicted the Alzheimer dementia. And the, the resources in uh, mathematically, uh, on, on, honestly, uh, I think I, I do not want to tell you using, uh, what's that the name? Dr. Uh, uh, Tang Chao, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he gave a presentation in your group talking right. about the scaling invariant. So he's the person who developed such a physiological model mm -hmm. to identify how that, uh, you know, uh, uh, create a fractal. However, in physiology, I don't know. <laughs> you know, that the transition will come from yes. physiology. What I'm thinking is about maybe there's a different uh, physiological process at that specific time scale. Then if they decouple that, then they make such a uh, something, a change, a, a transition. Like what I mentioned about the, the network circadian oscillator and ultradian oscillator. If you to decouple them, they do have such a changes at uh, mm -hmm. around two to four hours. So. Sorry, I, my explanation is not so clear because I'm not so clear about the answer. I just give you what I uh, believe or speculate, okay? So Dr. Kuhn, uh, who uh, relate to this question. So 
my one question is for the shorter time scale and longer time scale has the same slope for the same alpha for the normal person. Yeah. Uh, but it looks like the source of that ARPA regulation looks like deeper and longer one is circadian and maybe another shorter one could be something else. Yeah. But, but I'm curious how that slope R turns out the same in the short and long yes. scale. And then yes. second is what could be the benefit of by matching those two ARPA one and ARPA two? Uh, uh, what's the second question? Uh, First question? What would be the benefit of the kind of in the normal person, they, they are trying to matching the ARPA1 and ARPA2 slope, right? Yeah, okay. What would so, be the benefit of that? Yeah. Yeah, this is, a, this is definitely a very deep question, honestly. Why we have a fractal? Basically, that's the question, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and if uh, that's why, if you said one thing control at large time scale, mm -hmm. 24 hour round, 20, another one is five hours or two hours or minutes, why they want to have a fractal, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's some of the theory behind is, mm -hmm. uh, for example, even though these two process, they are kind of function at different time scale, think mm -hmm. about it. You still need to have uh, some of the arrangement in terms of, for example, you have a 24 hour, you have a five hours, right? Mm -hmm. But somehow you do not want the five hours destroyed 24 hours. They need to couple it. They need to have some of kind of transition. The amplitude need not be too strong. Mm -hmm. If you're too strong, you dominate. Mm -hmm. Resonance, you dominate. You do not have an adaptability for something else, nice. right? That's kind of the things at the beginning, uh, people hypothesis, why there's a fractal? Because you need to respond and you need to regularity. Mm -hmm. But once you're too regular, for example, you ha I have a 24 hour rhythm. I cannot change okay. it at all, but I have another five hours suppressed. That is bad for that uh, physiological function if nice. there's something changing, right? Nice. So I think if you think about that way, the fractal must be some of the arrangement agreement between uh, different uh, functions. Nice. The kind of, okay, let, let's do this way. So you're not too strong. I'm not too strong. We, we organize this way. You can like uh, pass the information or arrange it. So that's that. the, some of the theoretical things from the other uh, physical oh, system or other things. Yeah. So maybe R5, may have a more, yeah. Yeah. maybe R5 one might be the optimal uh, for the uh, fluctuation and robustness regardless of the time scale, I guess. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. once you change, then could be you change the large time scale the nodes and the put up there, but you may change the small time scale nodes and then mm. change it different. So that's why it's very complicated when there's a pathological condition. You do, you cannot just change check one place. You need to check uh, what is the time scale, and then you can identify what's the underlying physiological uh, biological functions, and then leads to future treatment other things. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then uh, now, final, uh, ah. help you finally. Okay, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, thank you for the uh, really interesting talk. Of course, uh, many figures are really friendly, but <laughs> I I'm, I'm, was really excited to hear your opinion or interpretation about it because I have read only the papers. So it was really helpful and great. Actually, I have been tracking every paper you published about fractal analysis. And it appears that sometimes you care about uh, shorter time scale fractal patterns or, and sometimes longer time scale. And sometimes the difference between two time scales. And yeah. even for the, how can I say, uh, phenotypes. So you sometimes care about the severity of dementia or disability or frailty. So, is it correct if you're, uh, if by saying your point of view keeps changing? And the second question is, <laughs> how how far do you think this is for, uh, from the consensus? Yeah. So I think you asking uh, very good questions, and then um, this is the reality, and this is uh, um, uh, some of the uh, how to say uh, linked to the uh, our limitation about the, the underlying mechanism control the fractal. Because as you said, for example, we use alpha one, alpha two, and then sometimes use alpha minus alpha two, right? 
So uh, there's a there's a two reason for that. I I should confess. Okay, <laughs> first, um, usually when we uh, present the work and uh, when we write the paper, we try to uh, 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 shows you the dramatic effects, which is uh, with uh, more confidence, right? For example. In the animal SC and legion animal study, we focus on alpha two, but we do just mention one sentence there, hey, alpha one do increase a little bit, okay? Even though it's not dramatic. But then of course you can argue, why don't you just say in uh, alpha two minus, uh, alpha one minus up to that time? Yes, we can do. The, uh, the, the reason is because at that time, alpha two is really close to 0.5, which is so easy for us to just uh, separate them, okay? Okay, this is this is one scenario. And then why we use alpha minus alpha two later, right? You ask the same question. Okay. <laughs> and the reason actually, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, yes. Actually, in that case, what we find is contradict the results, actually, mm -hmm. because some part of the result uh, uh, it's become uh, only uh, uh, clear later is alpha one, alpha two, both of them are changing. Okay. And mm -hmm. then depends on how much they are changing, how much changing for each of them depends on the uh, uh, subjects uh, aging. And then for some, somehow, alpha one minus alpha two, for example, we checked alpha and alpha separately, actually alpha two also. But for the predictor neuron degeneration, I see it, it for, for the reason I mentioned, because both of them are changing, there's a different uh, mechanism. And then when you use combine them, somehow they give you more power to predict the SCN neuron uh, you know, changes. That's what that happened. And actually that is always the case for you starting the younger population, uh, relatively younger population for some reason, alpha one minus alpha two is always more sensitive using the separate alpha one or alpha two. So. The reason is, um, uh, I've actually, I we have another project ongoing. It seems the changes of one over time may not same direction. I showed you only very old. What happened? Very young. You do not know. We do not know. I think we have some preliminary data showing. Actually, the alpha and two may 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 you know not like a, you know changing you know, linear. They have something uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. even increase a little bit at a certain stage and then mm -hmm. oh, so so there's some of such a dynamics there which we do not understand and just because limited the uh you know uh sample size at that time we we usually use you see is uh, uh sample size related you use alpha one minus alpha two for some reason give you more power okay, okay. Mm. yeah so uh of course i have uh lots of questions but we can talk later in SRBL. And yeah. I'm really uh, interested in the, uh, your circadian news modeling as well, because it is, I think it is the key to <laughs> reveal the mechanism generating the fractal patterns. Thank right, you. right. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, so there is a, a fine, uh, one more question, sorry. Uh, so actually a uh, similar question with me, have you considered it for Parkinson's disease? And actually I'm also interested in, uh, in different category mood disorder patients. <laughs> uh, actually we, we are, actually there's a, uh, one of the papers written, not written yet, but in preparation. Uh -huh. It's about the Parkinsonism. I cannot say Parkinson, but 